as me. And I think there will be problems for the British authorities. One big problem is only the Portuguese authorities can reopen the case. Sandra Falgueras is one of Portugal's leading TV presenters and has covered the McCann story from the start. With her own nightly news show, she's watched Portuguese public support shift away from the McCanns. They were following the case as it was a big movie. So if you start saying uh, three months later from her disappearance that maybe the McCanns are involved, People start thinking, oh my God, those guys, the same that were asking for help. I gave them money. I tried to help them. And now they must be involved. The police is saying that. And people's mind changed. And I never felt really that the Portuguese were likely to uh, give a chance to the McCann's again. With the Portuguese police and public opinion apparently against them, the family decided it was best simply to get out of Portugal. They returned home without Madeleine. We have played no part in the disappearance, the parents of our lovely daughter. Nearly a year later, the Portuguese Attorney General assessed the evidence and found there was no case to answer for the McCanns or Robert Murat. It's hard to describe how utterly despairing it was to be named our Guido and subsequently portrayed in the media as suspects in our own daughter's abduction. Despite Kate and Jerry McCann no longer being suspects, Portuguese public opinion hasn't changed and it continues to be influenced by the man who initially led the investigation before he was removed. Gonzalo Amaral has since made this documentary sticking to his version of events. He still believes that Madeleine wasn't abducted, but died in the flat. He's also written a best-selling book about it. And so far, he's made at least £300,000. Are you comfortable with making money out of a missing girl and a case that actually you failed to solve? When I left the police force, it was to write the book to clear my name, defend myself from what the British journalists and some Portuguese journalists were saying, accusing me of incompetence and other worse things. By pursuing a case for which there is little evidence, you actually diverted attention from the actual search for a missing little girl. The book deals with six months of the investigation and the conclusions at the time. So the investigation needed to continue. The truth is only known when an investigation is finished. Kate and Jerry McCann are suing Gonzalo Amaral. They say his allegations are false and not only libel them, but also damage the hunt for Madeleine. Hi, um, it's Richard Bilton from uh, BBC Panorama. We're here for Isabel Duarte. The libel lawyer concedes that defending the McCanns against the former detective is not a popular fight here in Portugal. I feel alone. Why? I feel alone because I, I don't feel support, uh, not in public opinion. Um, I have friends that don't want to talk to me about the case. Why? I don't understand. Because everyone believes in Gonzalo Meral. Everyone, everyone believes that I am defending a father and a mother that have killed the daughter and uh, got rid of the corpse. And it's that public opinion that's critical to the way the case has been dealt with. A former British Home Secretary believes to have any hope of success, the new review will require huge political effort. How complicated is it that in Portugal, public opinion seems to be against the McCanns? It's not something I had to think about because I was going through to the first stage, but it's something the Prime Minister might need to think about. And I hope he does have to think about it because that would suggest there is something there that is worth pursuing and is worth having a bit of a diplomatic uh, charm offensive with the Portuguese on. Now, a bit of diplomacy can ensure that you do get the cooperation you need from Portugal. Um, and we do get to the bottom of this. 
It's taken years for the McCanns to secure a British police review of the investigation. Years in which public interest in their daughter's disappearance has faded. By 2010, the case of Madeleine McCann was getting far less media coverage and the Find Madeleine Fund was starting to run out of cash. So Kate McCann decided to write a book to tell her story of what life was like here in Luch. The book was serialised in both the Sunday Times and the Sun, with their parent company, News International, paying a reported £1 million into the Find Madeline Fund. But it was about much more than money. The McCanns felt they were getting nowhere with the new Home Secretary, Theresa May. So, printed on the front page of the Sun was an open letter from the McCanns to her boss, David Cameron, appealing to him as a parent to agree to a review. But Panorama has learned there was much more going on behind the scenes to try to influence the Prime Minister. It was just a year ago before the worst excesses of phone hacking were known. A time when News International seemed to have had enormous influence over Downing Street. Now, we've been told by the highest government sources that pressure was being exerted on David Cameron by News International and by the Sun newspaper in particular, as well as by the McCanns. Within 24 hours, the Prime Minister decided that a review could be paid for out of a special contingency fund run by the Home Office and reserved for special cases. Madeleine McCann, the Prime Minister decided, was a special case. The Home Office declined to explain to us why they chose this unsolved case above any other. But a source at number 10 told us David Cameron acted as a sympathetic parent. Of course, it's politically risky to pour millions of pounds of taxpayers' money into an investigation that might never be solved. But the man in charge is optimistic, publicly at least, saying he believes his team has the best chance yet of finding out what happened to Madeleine McCann. As a detective, it, it is a huge privilege to have an opportunity to work on this case. And, I'm, and my, both my team and I feel that. So five years on, two teams on, two million pounds on, are we any nearer knowing what happened to Madeleine McCann? I am satisfied that the systems and process that we are bringing to this set of circumstances will give us the best opportunity to find those investigative opportunities that we can then present to our colleagues in Portugal. And could the mystery of Madeleine McCann be solved in such a basic way as a reappraisal of a, of a piece of paper that you've got downstairs? Anything is possible. And clearly within that material, the answer could lie. Do you think this case will be solved one day? I really, really hope that we can make a difference and of course we are here to try and bring closure for the family. But in Portugal, the McCann family's lawyer believes since the case was shelved in 2008, detectives here convinced the mystery has already been solved have ignored new lines of inquiry. I consulted uh, documents that were sent to the file after the investigation was closed. There was a declaration on those documents saying it is not of the interest of the investigation. So these were new leads that were coming in that were being discarded? New information. Pages and pages and pages of information. And no one was interested in making a deeper uh, investigation around that information. We understand that in the Algarve, there has been some low-level animosity at the arrival of British officers. Operation Grange has no jurisdiction in Portugal, and only the Portuguese can reopen the case. So much of the British work over the last year has been spent reassuring their colleagues here that it's a joint effort. But just last month, the idea that the Portuguese themselves would have a case review was unheard of. 
Madeleine McCann case now in Portugal is a file that is closed. It's an old story, a closed story. We don't have any news about it. The last information I've got uh, this morning from our uh, public prosecutor was that even knowing that you in the um, UK are trying to solve the case again with Scotland Yard, with the Scotland Yard's investigation, they are telling here uh, in Portugal that there's no investigation, that they are not going to reopen the case. Is there a review of the case here in Portugal? No. No. No, I don't think so. I think it's too delicate, too raw. It calls into question the reputation of the police. And I don't think the chief of police would risk it. It was only while we were in Portugal that things began to change. We contacted a well-known politician here, Ana Maria Gomes, to get her to ask questions. According to the information I got, the Portuguese police is also uh, conducting a review. Uh, who told you there is a Portuguese review then? Uh, I called the, the, uh, the director of the National uh, uh, Criminal Police. His uh, uh, deputy told me that. It's a, a review of the procedures that were followed in the investigation. Why does nobody here in Portugal know about this review? Well, I don't know. Public opinion in Portugal now is so upset and concerned with the economic crisis and its job destruction and so on. Uh, but uh, this is a very important case. First and foremost, to find out what happened to Madeleine and to um, uh, in, make sure that the Portuguese uh, justice and political system is properly seen outside uh, of Portugal. Within a week of our interview, the Portuguese police finally confirmed that a team based in the northern city of Porto, well away from the original investigation, has been reviewing the case for the last year. That work has been carried out discreetly and uh, it will continue to be carried out discreetly. Here, people seem to be open-minded. In Portugal, people seem to have a clear view about what happened. Have you encountered that? My engagement with the Portuguese is with the police officers sitting within the review team in Porto. Those officers are engaged, they are open, they are um, working with us collaboratively and I've not encountered with them any of those views. So what next? An odd and at times tense mix of British and Portuguese police forces continue to pick through the evidence. One wrong word could jeopardise everything. The discomfort is obvious. Won't they be slightly offended that, that they worked very hard on a case and now a foreign police force is saying, we're going to have a look at what you did, because you well, failed? What I would say to you on that, Richard, is that it would be wholly inappropriate for me to comment to you about how the PJ, the police and judiciary, feel about this, and that most probably is a matter best taken up with them. Did they start their review because you had yours? I'm not willing to discuss with you the, uh, the logistical side of the Portuguese policing response, but ultimately the decision around reopening is for them. It is a sovereign decision for the Portuguese authorities, but obviously what we seek to do is to bring them the best quality information to a system in making that decision. Next Thursday, Madeleine McCann will have been missing for five years. Our Prime Minister has gambled taxpayers' money on finding a resolution. Today, the British team announced they have fresh evidence in addition to the leads from their review. It now falls to them to succeed where the Portuguese have so far failed. To solve this enduring mystery.